In this video, we will answer this question. What is Pythagorean theorem? Let me answer that through this figure. A right triangle. Every right triangle has two parts. The legs and the hypotenuse, which is the side opposite to the right angle. And it is always the longest side. I will name these legs A and B. And for hypotenuse, let's name it C. With this, there is an equation that is always true for every right triangle in relation to its sides. And that is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. This means that the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of its legs. And this is what we call Pythagorean theorem. This theorem is only applicable for right triangles. Let's take this for example. A right triangle with a length of the legs 3 and 4. And the length of the hypotenuse is missing. So our task is to find the length of the hypotenuse given the length of the legs. And to do that, let's use the Pythagorean theorem. That is, 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to the missing hypotenuse. Let's name it x, so x squared. And so, 3 squared is 9 plus 4 squared is 16 is equal to the x squared. Let's combine 9 and 16. That is 25, which is equal to the x squared. Then take the square root of both sides. That means square root of 25 is 5, which is equal to the square root of x squared is x. Or you can write it in this way. They are just the same. Notice that the lengths of the sides of this triangle are all whole numbers. 3, 4, and 5. Having all whole numbers in the sides of a right triangle is rare, and so it has a special name. They are called Pythagorean triples. Let's have another example. This time, the missing side is one of the legs. And we have the given length of the leg to the hypotenuse hey. So let's use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing length of the leg. And so, the missing length of the leg, x squared, plus 2 squared is equal to 8 squared, which is the hypotenuse. So x squared plus square of 2 is 4, is equal to square of 8 is 64. And x squared is equal to transpose the 4 to the other side, it will be 64 minus 4. So x squared is equal to 60. Take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is x is equal to the square root of 60. But then we have to separate 60 to 2, two parts, so that one part is a perfect square. So that is square root of 4 times 15, where 4 is a perfect square. That means we can take the square root of 4 and we can just leave 15 inside the square root. So x is equal to square root of 4 is 2 and leave 15 inside the square root. That is 2 square root of 15. That is square root of 60 is 2 squared of 15. And the sides are not all whole numbers and that means this is not one of the Pythagorean triples. 
Another example, we have hypotenuse 13 and one leg is given 12 and the other leg is missing. So let's use Pythagorean theorem to find the missing length of the leg. So 12 squared plus the missing length of the leg or you can actually interchange the two. You may write first x squared plus 12 squared, it doesn't matter is equal to 13 squared. So 12 squared is 144 plus x squared is equal to the square of 13 is 169. Transpose. So we have 169 minus 144. So x squared is equal to 25. Take the square to both sides. So square root of x squared is equal to x, which is equal to the square root of 25, that is 5. So observe that we have all whole numbers of this size of this right triangle, that is 5, 12, and 13. And this is another example of a Pythagorean triple. In this figure, which one is the hypotenuse? Is the hypotenuse missing or given? The hypotenuse is given, that is 15. We have to keep in mind that hypotenuse is the opposite side of the right angle. And our missing side is the leg. So let us solve this. 8 squared plus x squared is equal to 15 squared. 8 squared is 64 plus the x squared is equal to square of 15 is 225. So x squared is equal to transpose the 64 to the other side. That's 225 minus 64. So x squared is equal to 161. Taking the square roots of both sides, square root of x squared is x, which is equal to square root of 161. As you notice, we didn't take out a number from square root of 161. This is because we cannot find a perfect square out of 161. So the final answer is square root of 161. Now let's have another example. In this figure, is the hypotenuse missing or given? The hypotenuse is missing. So you observe, it is the side opposite to the right angle. Now let's solve using the Pythagorean theorem. 15 squared plus 5 squared is equal to the missing hypotenuse. Let's name it x. So x squared. Square of 15 is 225 plus the square of 5 is 25 equal to x squared. The sum of 225 and 25 is 250 which is equal to x squared. Now take the square root of both sides. Now for square root of 250, we could separate it into two parts where we can find a perfect square. That is 25 and 10, where 25 is a perfect square. Now take the square root of 25, we get 5 and leave the 10 inside the square root. So it's 5 squared of 10 equal to x and that is the final answer 5 squared of 10 let's take this another example this time the leg is missing and let's use the Pythagorean theorem to find this missing sign so 12 squared plus 
the missing sign x squared is equal to 20 squared. 12 squared is 144 plus x squared is equal to square of 20 is 400. So x squared is equal to that has transpose 144 to the other side. 400 minus 144. So x squared is equal to 256. Taking the square root of both sides, we'll get the square root of x squared, that is x, equal to the square root of 256, which is 16. So as you observe, we have all whole numbers in this right triangle. That is 12, 16, and 20. And this is a Pythagorean triple. But then, this Pythagorean triple is one of the triples which where mathematicians are not that interested. It is because it is just a multiple of the 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean triple. And these Pythagorean triples are what you call primitive from Pythagorean triple, where this is the triple that mathematicians are trying to find. They are trying to find a formula that can generate all these primitive Pythagorean triples. And the other one is non-primitive, or just a multiple of the primitive Pythagorean triples. Euclid has found a formula to generate primitive Pythagorean triples. And before, it was thought that it is the formula that they are looking for. But then, a young mathematician has found one primitive triple where it cannot be generated by that formula. And up to now, they are still looking for that formula. That's all and thanks for watching. Special thanks to my friend Cody Gutan, who's the one who requested this topic.